Hey, Ancestry is coming out with some new tools right now. As you are watching this, new tools are being rolled out. Now, some of these are tools, and I'm gonna also go through some updates on some of the features that we talked about in September. There's some new things that are happening there. There's some stuff we haven't talked about, so there's a lot packed into this episode. If you wanna stay on top of what's happening at Ancestry, make sure you're subscribed to this channel because I try and bring it to you just as fast as I uh, learn about it. So uh, here we go. Let's jump into what I know already. Okay, so one of the things that Ancestry has done since the last update in September uh, is they have taken away the ability to expand the fan chart into multiple generations. There was a button here and Ancestry, if you're listening, bring it back. This was an awesome feature uh, that we had and we no longer have. I've gotten tons and tons of comments about how come I can't find it? Now, what you can do until they bring that back is if you click on an ancestor, if you right click and you say view tree, it brings that person down to the center. So if I want to bring Laura Nielsen, excuse me, into the center, right click, view tree, and it brings her down into the center. If you want to return back to the home person, which in my case is me, that puts me back here, I could then do the same thing, right click, view tree, and bring that person to the center. And that is kind of another way that we can expand the generations without expanding the generations. But I loved that feature. Uh, please, Ancestry, bring that back. That was very cool. The next thing I want to talk about was right on the home page. Uh, when you get here, you'll see this new section that says create a group. Now, I'm not going to go into that in great detail. All it does is if you've got a couple family members or somebody that you want to collaborate with, you can invite them to your tree even though they are not members of Ancestry. And then what is cool about it is in the messaging center, it's the same thing as a uh, group of people there. You can then have this conversation amongst the family members about the family tree. They could view the tree, uh, but they don't have to be a member. So the next feature I wanted to talk about that I don't think we've talked about at all here on the channel is this from the home tab here, my ancestry feed. And what this is, is kind of like the social media of ancestry. Um, now, one caveat that when I was playing with this when it first came out was when I posted a story, I got a lot of spam in my message center. Now, they may have fixed that. That was a couple of months ago. But I did ask some of the public if they were experiencing the same thing. And yes, in fact, other members were as well. So I'm just giving you the heads up. But this has got a lot of stories in it that people are posting as part of their experience on Ancestry. So if you want to record stories on your account, what you have to do is do it from your mobile phone. And so what you can do is you go to uh, the Ancestry app, go to the Discover tab, and then scroll down and you can find where it says Community Stories. You then select the type of story. It says Community Stories. And then you can scroll around and say, I don't know, Family Vacations. And then it will create, uh, start a story, and then you can use a variety of different templates to create a story. That's all I'm going to do on that right now, but um, I just want to let you know that if you're trying to figure out how to upload a story, you have to do it from your mobile phone. So there are instructions in the handout. Yes, there's a handout. It's about eight pages long now that talk about a little bit about how to use the mobile app as well as all of the new tools. Now, coming up next, we're going to talk about the new Pro Tools. Hey, we're going to get back to that video here in just a moment, but I want to let you know that Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that are in the show notes below. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so there are new tools that are under an add-on subscription. And let me tell you, I've got access to two of the four, but let me tell you what the four are. One's called Tree Checker. The other one is called Map Views. Another one is called Insights. And then the last one is called Reports and Charts. Now, what I'm going to show you today is the Tree Checker and the Reports and Charts because I don't have access to the other two. Those are coming out uh, soon. 
and map views might be out by the time you see this video, but as of this recording, it is not available to me, but I wanted to hurry up and get you this information as quickly as possible. So we're going to jump into the tree checker first. So what I find interesting is they call it the tree checker, at least the preliminary information they're sending out. And there is no tree checker on this part on on the tree, even if you go to like tree viewing options, there's like no tree checker here. So what you have to do is go to an ancestor's profile. So I right click and I'm going to say view profile. And here it says check facts. So I think maybe they're going to change the name to check facts instead of check tree checker. I don't know. But perhaps it'll pop up in a different place. But right now, uh, these are the two pro tools that I have access to. And so when I click on this, it gives me a side panel. In this case, there are no errors. See this little exclamation point up here. Had there been any errors, you would have seen a little dot. So what I'm going to do is right here, this is the only place that I know of where you can get to all errors is if you find someone in your tree and you hit the check facts, you get the side panel and there are no errors, then you get this button that says view all potential errors. So I'm going to go there and now I get a list of everyone that there are potential errors for. So let's take a look at this top one, Mary Albertson. I actually have no idea who she is, but it shows that there is an error. There's also some hints. So let's click on this and see what's going on. So it automatically takes me to her profile and it shows that a child was born after Mary Albertson passed away. So clearly there is more work to be done here and this is kind of an offshoot uh, relationship so I honestly probably have never worked this. Obviously I haven't because there's only one record in here that I probably imported from while importing to another person, another profile person. I probably added it automatically. So anyway, long story short, there's some work to do here and this is how we can find uh, more information. Let me hit the more button and see what that says. This gives me some more information. So this is great. This is awesome. So I think the check facts or tree checker option is really great to help clean up your family tree. All right. So the next one that we have access to is the reports and charts and how you get to that is also from the ancestors profile. So here I'm going to pick Charles Booth. I'm going to right click and I'm going to view his profile. Once we're here, you have this charts and reports. And by the way, if you're not seeing this menu right here, go to tools and drop down and show research tools. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and open this in a new tab so that I can preserve my profile. So once we get over here, we have four different types of reports. What you're looking at right now is the family group sheet, which is you know, kind of the old school way of looking at things, but it's still very useful. It shows the father, the mother, and all of the children associated along with their statistics, that birth, marriage, and death information uh, when it's available. Okay. We also have the Anantafel report, and that is the ancestors report. Descendancy. All right. So these are all the descendants of the chosen person, Charles Booth. So here we've got quite a few and we could increase the generations here and get a much deeper report and you can go all the way out to seven generations here. So this might be helpful, especially if you are doing some DNA research and you're trying to find all of those descendants of this person and see how they line up in your tree. We then have the register report and here it kind of reads a little bit more like a narrative. It starts out, you know, giving us full sentences. Charles Booth was born on the 26th of April, 1736. So you get the idea. So it is a little bit more of a narrative, but then it kind of breaks down into the different uh, generations as well. And then, then finally we have the family group sheet again that we've already uh, talked about. Now they have two different styles of report. This is the pine report with this green line. You can get it without that uh, green banner across the top. While these things are in beta, you'll see this beta button down here. If you see something that's not working right, when you report a bug that is in beta, 
it goes directly to the engineers that are working on it. Now you won't get a response, I promise you, but they are getting that information and they review it weekly. Now this kind of solves a problem that I have gotten numerous questions about, and that is, can you download these charts and can you print this stuff? And yes, you can. Right here, you can download it and maybe create a book for the holidays or whatever, or you could send it to print, which a lot of people like to do. Now, one thing that this report will not do is print a list of everyone in your tree. I know that I have gotten probably over a hundred comments about a request to print a list of everyone in the family tree. And the closest you can come is the Anantafo report and set yourself as the focus person and then max out the generations at seven generations. For me, it does not give everyone in the tree. It would only give you your direct line ancestors. It does not give all the descendants of all of these ancestors either, nor does it get back to all of the generations that I have in my tree because I go way beyond seven generations. I'm just saying this is the closest that you can come because the descendancy report is is going to give you the descendants, which is separate from the Anantafo report. And the register report is also a descendancy report. And the family group sheet is just, uh, you know, that family unit, the husband, wife, and children. And so long story short, there still is not a way to print everyone in the tree. I know a lot of people just want an index. They just want to be able to sort by surname and print everyone in the list. As far as I know right now, you can't do it. As always, anytime you see something that's in beta and you have the opportunity to give feedback, please let the engineers know, good or bad, please make sure you're submitting good comments as well of what you like and what uh, other enhancements that may be of benefit to everyone. Make your voice heard using the report a bug or the general feedback button. Stay tuned. There's more coming. Make sure you're subscribed uh, to this uh, channel so that you will get notified. If you ring the bell, you'll get the notification of when the updates are coming from Ancestry. Remember, there is map views and insights that we still have yet to come out. Some of this is coming out in December. Some of it, I hear, is coming out in January. So uh, stay tuned. More coming.